All right, I had a question about the in in product templates the part family refinement uh, function, what that is and how that works. <laughs> so I thought I'd do a little example here to show um, what that's for, and uh, and how it uh, goes together. So this this little example you may have seen before. This is a, a kind of cleat that we would mount to a, a wall or a floor or something like that to retain uh, the one end of a rope or a cable, right? Uh, so it's going to attach there. And this is, uh, again, this is a template. Uh, it has, uh, this is the small cleat. This is a member of a part family here. And as we um, change this, we can change a, a tensile load that's going to be on this. And, uh, and there's some kind of some zones on this where it's going to swap in uh, different size uh, cleats. Okay. And just to keep it simple here, with putting a thousand newtons, anything uh, below that, there's a threshold in there somewhere, but a thousand will show us the small one. If we put in 2000, it's going to switch and show us the medium one here. And of course, if we go to 3000, it's going to show us the large one, right? And, and a couple things are happening here. Of course, we've got a quantity of holes that are changing. And um, also, uh, that's the same size holes. And if we go to the smaller size, um, we're going to have uh, smaller size uh, fasteners, okay? So that's a key. Uh, these are going to be M6s, uh, the small size, and then we're going to use M8s at the larger size. And that's where we're going to introduce this refinement thing, okay? <laughs> so we'll see how this works here in just a second. Um, starting here, let me go ahead and add. I'm going to go ahead and add our uh, fastener, okay? And to do that, I've got, yeah, a socket head cap screw model there already. The M6 is already open. That's okay. We'll go grab this. Now, we want to do this intelligently, right? We want this to be smart. And so there's actually an expression in this assembly called screw diameter that's that's coming from the, um, the cleat, actually. And in fact, we can look at that. That might be smart. So if we look at the expressions in this part here, again, we have this screw diameter right here that's an inner part expression that's coming from this cleat. And um, the the swapping of the components here, uh, the, the replacing the part family member uh, specifically is smart enough that as we replace with the, this with the medium or the large, that this inner part expression will will update automatically as part of that. Okay, so again, this is associated with the small right now. We're not using this yet, right? But it, it's coming from this this part family member. Um, so, for instance, if we come in here and we uh, swap this to two thousand, right? This is this is swapped that. This is now has the the cleat has a bigger um, requirement for a larger fastener there, right? So, if we look at the expressions here again you'll notice now that the screw diameter is now eight millimeters and it's coming from the medium cleat. Okay. So the, again, this is just kind of normal NX here as we swap this, swap this, uh, part family member. Uh, again, we're, we're inner part expressions automatically updating to the new parent out there. Um, so we're, we're, we're not to the refinement yet, but, uh, but we're, we're getting there. I just want to show you how this is set up. Okay. So let's put this back in the, the small position. Um, and let's add that, add that, uh, screw. Okay. Now here again, I want to make sure I get the the master, the parent here, which is this guy. Anyway, I select that in add component. Of course, it's going to have me choose a part family member. Um, the one I'm going to key off of here is this thread major diameter, and this turns out to be the same number as the uh, the nominal size of the of the th the screw here, right? Um, in this case, I want that to equal that screw diameter that we were just looking at, right? So if I put that that expression name in here. Then I'm going to create an associative relationship for the selection of this fastener here that's going to use the expression in the part to look at the part family table and set create an equal relationship there, right? And when we do this, I'm going to hit enter here. What's going to happen is the valid values here is going to narrow down to the screw diameter, which is going to be six in this case. And all the rest of these will move to the invalid side, right? So we'll say OK there. And uh, hit, hit enter there on that that criteria, and that sure enough, that did it. Okay. Now, as it did that, it uh, reduced that down to to six, and there are a whole bunch of options here for six, right? Now, um, I, I specifically, I don't need this to engage super far uh, into the the thing that I'm going into. It doesn't need to be a you know a 50, 80 millimeter engagement there. Um, so what I'm going to do is on the length here, I'm just going to choose twenty. Right, and that's going to set up a criteria, selection criteria, 
that says look for a length of 20. Okay. Now it's going to do that at the same time as we do the screw diameter up here. So as we move from a, an M6 to an M8 to an M10, um, it's going to uh, automatically select the, the length uh, 20 millimeters for, for each of those. Okay. So, so again, this is now refined our list down to one specific member here, this M6 120 or M6 by one is the thread and then 20 is the length. Right. And, uh, and with that all in place, uh, we can say, okay. And that's going to automatically add that component now. Okay. Specifically that, that M6 by one by 20. Okay. Now this has some remembered constraints in it. So I'm going to say, okay. And, uh, again, we've got a, a, a distance here with that shoulder and then the line here that's with the, uh, the center axis here. So I'm going to grab that axis and that'll, that'll attach that into place. Okay. Good. So that's that one. And then just for fun, I'm going to put that in the model reference set to make that clean. Okay. So this is driven now again by that expression. And the expression is driven by our selection of our size here, right? And our selection of our size is driven by our load. So as we change our load here from 1000 to 2000, we'll see the cleat get reselected to the medium. Medium has a larger M8 size here. And so we'll see this fastener also, uh, actually, that'll feed the expression to the top. The expression will, will, the top level assembly will pull that inner part expression from the cleat. It'll change to cleat medium, that'll change to M8, and then we'll see our, our new M8 here get selected automatically, right? So we'll go to 2000 there. Okay, good. And that's updated. And if we go to 3000, it's the same size, but we've got a, a bigger cleat here now. Okay. So with that, let's come back to 1000 and, and we've got a really clean one here, right? Where we've got specifically one possible screw that matches those two criteria out there in the part family. There's specifically one, um, uh, one, one of them that's both an M6 and 20 millimeters long. And we've got exactly one that's M8 that's exactly 20 millimeters long. Okay. And, uh, and so that's, that's good and that's clean, right? Now, one thing we can do if we want to in the part family dialog here, or sorry, the, the product template dialog, uh, if we come into product template author here, uh, we can add to this dialog, this part family refinement control. Okay. Now here's, here's what this actually does. This is going to tell us, first of all, about the selections that are happening already. Okay. Uh, in this case here, we've got the cleat and it's correctly selecting the cleat and it's the only member in that part family that matches the criteria that we've got right now. So it says, tells us that it's the only valid member. Similarly with our, our socket head cap screw here, we've got, um, that M six by 20 is the only valid member that, that matches that. Okay. We can rename this here if we want to, um, this guy here, call this our, maybe our part family selections or something like that. Right. Um, and spell it right just for fun. There we go. All right, cool. So anyway, um, we can save the dialogue in this state and we'll see what happens, right? When we're in the state here and we go to do that same edit, um, this will be visible and it'll tell us that these are our only valid members here in these cases, okay? So it, it's kind of underwhelming so far, okay? Let's swap to the M8 and it tells us that's the only one, right? So that's good. Um, so right now we've got a really robust model, right? If we know our, our part families really well, you can build a really robust uh, template that really doesn't need this to be visible, right? If you know your families well, they're nice and robust. You get a single answer each time for the part families. This is not necessary. Okay. Now there are some cases where when you switch a criterion, you're going to end up with more than one possible answer for the uh, part family member selection. And so when that happens, then it starts to get ambiguous, right? And when it gets ambiguous, that's when we get into that part family member selection refinement, right? That's the, hence the name of this guy here, this refinement control. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna change our part family here so that we get an ambiguous situation, okay? And, uh, and with that in place, we'll see how that works. And to do that, what we're going to do um, is I'm going to go back to that uh, screw family, right? This is the top level family there for this one. And as we do that, it's already open. There we go. Uh, let's go into the part family 
And right now in our part family, we have um, right here, uh, this is that thread major diameter here. That's that uh, kind of that nominal size, our length right here. And so let's go down to the M6s and, and 8s and 10s right here, okay? Um, this M620 here is one that we're, we're commonly using. This M820 is the other one we're commonly using, right? Now what I'm going to do is, again, create a condition where when I swap, swap to 8, it's going to be ambiguous, okay? And to do that, I'm going to come in here and insert a row. And I'm going to take this row 71 and copy it there okay and the blue is going to tell me kind of the changes i'm making in this session which is pretty cool these are going to stay the same eight and the 20 are going to stay the same what i'm going to do is actually swap the material on this right and right now it's on steel and i'm i'm have a, a a brass in this part here as well okay so the numbers are actually the same but just the material is different here okay and um and, and that's going to set up enough of a, a uh, an ambiguity that when I, I go in and I, I filter on this size here, the thread major, it gets to the eights. Uh, and then I go looking for 20. There are a couple of 20s, right? And so there'll be two options here available when we, uh, when we go to, to solve this. Um, and, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to save the, the family here. And I can't remember if it happens on save or on okay here, but, but it's going to tell me I've got a little problem. Okay. Let's try it. Uh, yep, it popped up on my other monitor over here. It's telling me that I've got duplicate members found, right? So I need to fix the named members to, to continue with the save creator update. And, and what I've done here is I, I still have, right, oops, actually here and here, the uh, the OS part name here, right? And the DB part number. These guys here are, are, are not unique, right? These need to be unique here. So what I'm going to do is on my new blue ones, I'm going to, I'm going to add a little brass suffix on these, right? Let me copy that right there. And let's do the same thing on there. Okay. And, uh, and the description doesn't really matter. This one's, this one's, uh, more cosmetic, but I'll go ahead and put it on there too. Okay. All right. So we've got, so we've got now a, a disambiguated name here, right? It's a unique names there. And now when we save it, it's happy. Okay. Now everything went black. And uh, if we go look in our M8s, we see now this row 72 is now this new brass guy, right? That's brass. Uh, the dimensions, again, are the same, but this, the, the material here is different for this guy. Okay? So with that in place, um, one thing I'm going to do... Uh, actually, no, we're good. Uh, so we'll say OK there. Uh, I, I did save it, so we're good. We'll say OK. And, uh, and with that, let me save the part family, okay? So the part family master now has that uh, that new option in there, right? When we do this, so as we come in now to make our edit, right, we'll see this new behavior, right? So our, our family master has changed, and as we come in here now to make this two thousand, right? Again, as we hit enter here, it's going to look at that tension load based on that two thousand. It's going to go in and want to swap in the medium, okay? When it swaps in the medium, the medium is going to have a new uh, mounting uh, fastener size. Uh, that's the M8. That's going to get pulled into the top level assembly through that inner part expression. That inner part expression that's uh, called screw diameter, right, is going to get used then in the selection criteria for this fastener. And as we do that, um, we're going to see it go to M8 and we're going to see it get ambiguous here. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to hit enter right here. And this is what happens. As we do that there, you'll notice that, that the, the top one is still fine, right? The cleat family is still, it's the only valid member out there. But like we said, we, we now have this ambiguous condition in the M8 column, right? And so we can go in now and choose one or the other of these, right? To be our uh, valid member here for this, this particular one. And that one, I've, I've chosen the steel one there. That's fine. We can do the opposite, right? Come in there. It's still ambiguous. We can choose the brass one instead. And uh, and when we do that, it actually just generated that brass component for the first time. It didn't exist before that moment because <laughs> uh, we just barely added it to the table. But um, but yeah, you see it's it's created that and popped that into the assembly there now, right? So that's our, our, our other one. Uh, and then, yeah, we could pop it back here and you can see that it's going to swap out that uh, other component there for us, right? As we make that selection in the, 
in the uh, the tool for for that refinement. Okay, so that's conceptually what that does, right? Again, if we look into product template author, this control, right, is going to go in there first. Just show us that we've got everything right. <laughs> well, hopefully, right, and uh, and if everything's right, then all you'll ever see is only valid member, right? Because it's finding the only valid member, and that's and that's great. If you have a situation where you get into an ambiguity, right? What this is going to do is again allow your end user of your template to go and start to make a choice. Okay. Now y it's a little tricky to get into this situation, right? Because you you'll notice that the way I did it in this case was to go in and edit the part family part family master table after the fact, right? Um, because it, I couldn't create that condition at, at, up front there, um, it, because I would have had to have di disambiguated this up front, right? Uh, to, to add an M8 in the first place. Yeah, actually, I probably could have done it here. That would have still worked because I was adding the M6 originally, and the M6 was not ambiguous. So I could have added the M6 with the criteria, and then as I switched to M8, it would have found this condition. So it, it might be easier than you think, <laughs> right? You might be able to get the first one in there and then find that it's ambiguous later, right? So this, this may be a good thing to, to pop into your template, use as you're doing some evaluation, make sure it's behaving the way you think it's behaving, make sure it's robust in, in all the places you think it's robust. And, uh, and then you might, you might be able to just remove this in the end, right? And once you know your template is robust, um, and, uh, and that'll be clean. Okay. So, uh, that's, that's what this does. Again, it, it's specifically for refining the situation when you've got an ambiguous, uh, part family member based on your selection criteria. And, uh, and that's, that's what it'll let you do is let you choose one or the other or, or one of many, maybe many, uh, that are out there. Okay. Great. Uh, I hope you find that useful.